People have been fishing for at least 40,000 years, which is a long time, and people still continue to practice this ancient hobby. The main difference is that they don't fish because their lives depend on it. They fish because it's fun. It's even better when you throw a camera into the mix so we can get great videos like this. From strange creatures behaving in odd ways, nature being too extra for words, to people hauling up mysteries from the deep on the ends of their rods. Although fishing requires a lot of patience, there's never a dull moment. We promise. Fisherman captures what no one was supposed to see. Catching Tuna Maldivian Style Pole and line refers to an ancient artisanal fishing method that supplies about 10% of the world's canned tuna today, mostly from the western and central Pacific and the Maldives in the Indian Ocean. That's the Maldivian way. Better for you, better for tuna, and better for our precious earth. It's also a super exciting sport to watch because tuna is big and they're ultra fast. And since pole and line fishermen catch one tuna at a time, and pull them onto the boat right away, there's little chance to hook unintended sharks, sea turtles, and diving seabirds. Of the seven commercially important tuna species, these fishermen catch mostly skipjack and some albacore, both of which have largely healthy stocks. It's the most sustainable method of catching the most sustainable tunas. Besides being very popular in restaurants worldwide, canned tuna is a staple in many people's pantries. Americans and Europeans buy more canned fish than anyone else, importing almost a million tons in 2018. So, here's what you can do to help. Read the label. Pick a brand with pole and line scrawled across its side for delicious tuna without a side of guilt. Bon Appetit! Nothing like a seared piece of tuna, some roasted potatoes, some lemon and herb sauce. Is anyone getting hungry? Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. If you're ever out in the ocean and this happens, be glad you had your camera rolling because it doesn't happen very often. Just make sure you stay in the boat when a great white shark like this is close by. This spectacular behavior is called breaching and great white sharks breach in order to catch fast moving prey like seals. Swimming fast at the surface, sharks can reach 40 miles an hour and fly 10 feet into the air. However, breaching is relatively rare because the shark has to use so much energy to propel itself. Great white sharks are very similar to humans in that they all have unique personalities with different strengths and weaknesses, as well as different attitudes, tendencies, and preferences. But as you can see, they're the ultimate apex predator. So, would you consider a dive with these mighty beasts? Or are you happy to stay out of the water? Leave a comment with the hashtag sweet topic and let's get the conversation started. Whiskey Fish The video of a fisherman who found an unopened bottle of whiskey inside a fish while filleting it on a table has gone viral. We can toast to that! The video shows the fisherman on a boat filleting the fish while the other fishermen watch him. It's pretty normal in the beginnings as the fisherman cuts the fish, but things take a turn when he felt something on the inside and cut open the stomach of the fish. A bottle of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey slid out from the inside. The fisherman, thrilled, could be heard saying jackpot in the video after finding the bottle of liquor. The location of where the video was shot is, however, unknown. Regardless, the video instantly grabbed the attention of netizens with millions of views. While many thought the bottle was shoved into the fish by the fisherman, others expressed their concern over the major issue of pollution in the water bodies, which has been responsible for the loss of marine life. In today's time, with the amount of plastic and other materials in our oceans, it's no surprise when animals swallow non-biodegradable objects. But in the meantime, not much else to do here but grab some shot glasses and share with your fishermen friends. Snake on Deck Have you seen a snake in the ocean? Ever wondered how these snakes differed from the ones found on land? These amazing animals have been entertaining scuba divers throughout the Indo-Pacific Ocean for years, long before sea snakes became the subject of popular viral posts. But make no mistakes, sea snakes are front-fanged and highly venomous. A fold in the gums of a sea snake hides the fangs, and the fangs quickly emerge when biting. The fangs are fragile and may break off and remain in the wounds of the victims. To counter the problem of having weak fangs, Sea snakes have potent venom that can easily paralyze, kill, and begin the digestive process of the fish they target. It's all about the tail. 
While it's impractical to analyze the DNA of every snake-like creature you come across, an easy way to identify sea snakes from their land-based cousins is by their paddle-like tails. Their flat tails help sea snakes propel themselves gracefully through the water, but these appendages do make these slightly clumsier on land. Clearly, this fisherman knows them well. Generally, sea snakes are not aggressive animals. Attacks on humans are extremely rare. Bites occur chiefly to fishermen who try to remove sea snakes from their nets. <laughs> sea Lion Buffet Fishermen describe it as an oceanic flash mob, a sudden swarm of sea lions that descends upon commercial boats as they haul in their herring catch. When a commercial boat sets its net and draws it in like a purse, the sea lions jump or slide over the net to gorge on the captive prey. As the net is drawn closer to the vessel when the herring pumped onto the deck, the sea lions slip over the net. Fishermen are naturally not happy to see so many predators in their nets devouring part of the catch and generally believe there are too many of the animals in local waters. But they've learned to live with the marine mammals and when one occasionally gets its teeth caught in the line, it's safely removed by adjusting the net or spraying the animal with a hose. Some fishermen bang the ship's steel with a hammer to try to scare the sea lions away. Some sea lions also get into the net when the heavy catch dragged the top of the net below the surface. Scores of them also patrolled outside the net waiting to get in. California sea lions migrate north to Canadian waters by the thousands from autumn through spring, before returning to breeding grounds in Southern California and Baja, Mexico. But they gotta eat. Hidden in the Sand The intertidal zone of the sandy beach and its animal inhabitants are incredibly dynamic. If you dig in the wet sand and find sand crabs, don't expect to find them in the same place a few hours later. The fish and the squid, on the other hand, look as if they got stuck as the tide rolled out. But that's the risk when you live on or near the beach. These creatures' hiding spots change from submerged at high tide to exposed dry conditions during low tide a radical change in habitat over a short time frame. What's different about the beach is that many of the animals that live here move constantly to follow the tide as it rises and falls. An array of crustaceans, including sand crabs, roly-polies and beach hoppers, beetles, bloodworms and clams, all move up and down the beach according to the water level. The on-the-go lifestyle makes management of the ecosystem a unique challenge. But this guy, with his trusty shovel, knows a little investigating and some digging can potentially save a fish or two. It's also a pretty easy way to hunt for your own dinner. Hidden under the sand in temporary burrows or nestled in the kelp rack, sand-dwelling animals associated with different parts of the beach are constantly shifting positions with the tide. The Bamboo Trap The ancient practice of fishing has taken many forms and sometimes the most basic supplies can make for a successful fish haul. Check out what these crafty fishermen do to lead the fish right into their trap. The video shows every step. Bamboo shoots are arranged in the mud connecting the shallow water to a hole along the shore. And with a little bit of bait, usually some egg yolk or rotten food, the fish literally chase the scent through the bamboo and splash, dinner's been caught. The fish, crab and eels have millions of years of evolution so finding holes in the bank is perfectly natural. They use them to hide in, resulting in fewer deaths. So they seek the holes, especially with the scent of prey. As for the traps, you can arrange them any creative way you can think of, and the fish do the rest of the work for you. These small creatures swim, scud, hop, and crawl up the bamboo, and plop, your bucket just fills right up. Easy as that. Their habitat is never confined to one location. These creatures can move in any direction on the beach to follow changes in beach width and conditions. But you can set this bamboo trap anywhere, really. A couple of beach landmarks know as the high tide line and the water table outcrop can help you locate a good place to trap fish. Plowing for fish. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Check out these little kids hand fishing while the farmer's plowing in the field. That's a lot of mud to muck about in, but they're loving it. It looks like they're hunting, climbing, and copper snakehead fish. The climbing perch is native to Asia, where it occurs from India East to China and to the Wallace Line. It's an invasive species that can live without water for six to 10 hours. So it's important these boys fetch as many as possible. It's believed that the fish may be invading new territories too. 
It also has been established in some countries outside of its native range, in eastern Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. This species grows to 9.8 inches in total length. The snakeheads are native to parts of Africa and Asia. These elongated, predatory fish are distinguished by their long dorsal fins, large mouths, and shiny teeth. National Geographic has referred to snakeheads as fishzilla because they can become invasive species and cause ecological damage because in many areas to which they're not native, the absence of natural enemies gives them apex predator status. Not only can they breathe air, but they can also survive on land for up to four days, provided they're wet and are known to migrate up to a quarter mile on wetland. So, these boys are on the job. <laughs> All hands on deck. Did you know that commercial fishing has a fatality rate 23 times higher than other occupations? The sinking of vessels accounts for half of the fatalities. Another top cause is going overboard. But considering the intense working conditions, both of these things seem relatively easy to do. A study found that 204 fishermen died in the United States between 2000 and 2016. Nearly 60% of the falls weren't witnessed. Almost 90% of the victims were never found. Those are some disturbing numbers. In every death, it's believed that none of the fishermen wore a personal flotation device. The good news is, advances in technology have made life jackets easier to wear and more popular for anglers. Still, the study estimates that less than 10% of commercial fishermen wear them while working. When you're riding out storms like this, wear a life jacket and hold on. These boats get hammered by nasty weather conditions. That's why commercial fishing remains one of the most dangerous jobs around the world. Today's life jackets are not the bulky, cumbersome clunkers that most people are familiar with. Newer models are lighter and don't feel like you're even wearing one. Life jacket or not, it's all hands on deck when there's fish and crabs to catch, bad weather or not. <laughs> mammoth Discovery Check out this Siberian fisherman finding a mammoth tusk in a river. It probably appeared there from the thawed permafrost. Unfortunately, climate change is causing Siberia's permafrost to thaw. It's a growing environmental problem, emanating greenhouse gases, damaging buildings, and creating vast craters in the landscape. But the thawing of this once frozen ground is also revealing an ancient treasure, woolly mammoth bones. Siberia is a massive mammoth graveyard, and it's estimated that the remains of hundreds of thousands of these massive mammoths lie buried in the permafrost. It's one of the world's last great wildernesses, but its greatness is being scavenged for an unusual treasure trove by an underground business that's booming. Every year, crews of people head to the region to dig up the tusks of woolly mammoths that lie frozen in the permafrost. It's a dirty job, and these people feel like doing it, but the payoffs are huge. They sell the mammoth tusks for huge profits, and this is Siberia's gold rush not in precious metals like diamonds and gold, but in body parts and bones. An intact tusk relic can sell for $34,000 and up. Tusk hunters can earn up to $100,000 a week. <laughs> Under the ice. This video appeared online and millions of people saw it, argued about it, and decoded it. Ice diving in Finland is no joke. The entire film was shot upside down. The cameraman was in the water upside down. The fishermen were in the water upside down. They weren't standing on the icy lake floor. They were hanging suspended on the underside of the lake surface. Kind of like this. Ice diving is an advanced form of technical diving that takes place in situations where the surface of the body of water you're diving in has frozen solid. Because of this, ice diving is happening in a place with a frozen ceiling that prevents you from surfacing in case you run low on air or if some other form of emergency presents itself. It's therefore both exciting for some scuba divers and more dangerous than your average recreational dive. These divers even have tools and a wheelbarrow to add to the effect. But it's an advanced form of diving that shouldn't be undertaken without proper training. Getting certified by experienced instructors will give you a chance to find out more about what could go wrong in order to avoid having to try it for yourself. Good buoyancy control is a necessity when you're upside down like these divers. <laughs> whale sharks suck. An environmental group captured this footage of a whale shark sucking bait fish from a hole in a giant fishing net. The footage was shot in the bird's head seascape a marine area over 180,000 square kilometers in Indonesia. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the world, 
but make no mistake, they're not whales, they're sharks. They have a lot in common with whales. For example, they're massive and they feed more like whales than a typical shark. The filter feeder typically eats microscopic plankton. It does this by pulling a big gulp of ocean water into its mouth like a vacuum cleaner. It releases the water through its gills like a strainer. But this whale shark craves something else in this clip. This is proof that the whale sharks also eat tiny fish and that they can learn. However, this feeding behavior is highly unusual. These whale sharks have also become accustomed to being hand-fed by the fishermen and appear to be non-migratory. This is unique since whale sharks generally cover vast distances. Their heads are flattened and have a blunt snout above their mouth. Their backs and sides are gray to brown with white spots and pale stripes. Their bellies are white. Each whale shark has its own unique pattern of spots, much like human fingerprints. Yacht Hopping Octopus You gotta see this octopus escape from this boat in Croatia, slowly sneaking along the deck till it eventually plops in the water and swims away. But did we ever stop to consider how clever the octopus truly is? Turns out this creature's brain not only makes it the world's most intelligent invertebrate, but according to some measures, as smart as a golden retriever. Oddly, philosopher Aristotle thought octopuses were dumb. In his History of Animals, written in 350 BC, the Greek philosopher wrote that the octopus is a stupid animal, for it will approach a man's hand if it's lowered in the water. But it is neat and thrifty in its habits, that is, lays up stores in its nest, and after eating up all that is eatable, it ejects the shells and sheets of crabs and shellfish and the skeletons of little fishes. But let's face it, he was wrong about these little geniuses. These whip-smart but bizarre cephalopods seem to embody everything creepy and mysterious about the sea. The thought of their soft, squishy bodies lurking in the ocean's dark reaches has inspired monsters like the Kraken. However, the big-brained octopus can navigate through mazes, solve problems, and remember solutions, and take things apart for fun. They even have distinct personalities, like this little sun-soaked octopus. Stilt fishing Stilt fishing is a method of fishing unique to the island country of Sri Lanka, located off the coast of India in the Indian Ocean. The fishermen sit on a crossbar called a peta, tied to a vertical pole and driven into the sand a few feet offshore. From this high position, the fisherman casts his line and waits until a fish comes along to be caught. Although the approach looks primitive and ancient, stilt fishing is actually a recent tradition. The practice is believed to have started during World War II. Like most traditions, it was born out of necessity. With the influx of British troops during the war, the demand for food and subsequent overfishing forced many Sri Lankan fishermen out of their conventional, long-established fishing spots. This led to the practice of perching on existing features within the water lines such as large rocks, sunken vessels, and in some cases ditched aircraft. However, new desirable fishing spots located elsewhere made the fishermen think again. Before long, they'd begun erecting stilts directly on the coral reefs to provide themselves with the best possible fishing spots. Despite the demanding level of physical fitness, mental fortitude, and significant patience required, the fishermen on the coastline of Gale have been using this technique for over 70 years, across three generations. The Round Fishing Boat this circular watercraft is a portable and personal fishing boat called the Ultra Skiff. The small and lightweight design of the boat is perfect for fishing, hunting, or just going for a ride. And it's comfortable too. It comes with a rotating chair, a small motor, and a fishing rod holder. The fish rod platform is very versatile. That allows you to sit on a chair, cast a rod, or simply just stand. What better way to develop your own fishing style? You can even use it to suntan with a friend. This circular watercraft can hold up to 460 pounds of weight. The extreme stability of the boat allows you to stand around the edge or pull yourself from the water without tipping. The round fishing boat weighs only 123 pounds, so it's easy to transport. Once you're done fishing, then simply slide it, roll it, and haul it back into your truck with minimum effort. It's designed to provide more stability and comfort while you fish the day away. It has multiple storage compartments to keep your fishing tools, food, foldable paddles, anchors, beer, survival gear, and life jackets safe. You can also keep your fish alive by keeping them in one of those compartments. 
It's everything you need for some solo fishing and look really cool doing it. Smart fishing bait boat. Bait, in this regard, implies anything from ground bait, loose feed, particles, and boilies to the hook bait itself. You need it to catch all the fish. As the name suggests, this boat is used for carrying and delivering your bait to a specific point on your fishing trip. While many anglers use a bait boat for mere pre-baiting purposes, simply because it's a more convenient and faster way to get a large quantity of feed out onto your intended fishing spot, there are also plenty of fishermen who send it out their rigs on a bait boat. The latter makes the most sense on the really big lakes where long distance fishing is your only option. The first key feature of the bait boat is the autopilot with map feature that allows you to set up to four programmed spots in your swim to send your boat to at a click of a button, requiring no steering at all along with a home button feature that'll bring the boat back at the touch of a button without any other control necessary. This is a fantastic way to ensure you hit the same spot with your bait every time to give you the best chance at fishing awesomeness. It also comes with a full app that's free to download so you can actually look at a map of the water and select your spots that way. A must have for every serious fisherman. So you see, sometimes when you cast your line, you never know what surprises await you on your hook. So while you're trolling for fish, keep those cameras rolling, like and subscribe since you're here and stay tuned for more.